Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck as suggested by one of my supporters on Patreon, a deck that has received a few upgrades with Streets of New Capenna, so it's worth revisiting, and one of those is Topiary Stomper at 3 mana, a 4 for Vigilant, that when it enters can find a basic land, but it can only attack and block as soon as we have 7 or more lands in play. And then at 7 mana, our curve topper of choice is now Titan of Industry, great at stabilizing us as a 7-7 Reach Trample, and when it enters can gain 5 life, maybe blow up an artifact or enchantment, make a Rhino token or maybe put a shield counter on one of our creatures. So this is excellent against the various aggressive decks, compared to some of our other curve toppers, which I think have fallen out of favor a little bit. Cyclone Summoner, for instance, not that great when the opposing decks have a bunch of haste creatures that they can easily replay, and even Koma is not as good right now, with a lot of exile effects and even the Meat Hook Massacre, the best sweeper in standard, being able to deal with it even through Indestructible. So I think Titan is a nice replacement there. And then looking through the rest of our deck, of course we want to be ramping. So starting out at one mana, we've got Neverwinter Dried to accomplish that. We've got some cheap interaction as well with Fading Hope to make sure we don't get run over. At two mana, we've got a few counter spells with Disruption, which can also be played as a land, and Decisive Denial, even on the draw, can maybe counter a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, for instance, and in the late game can also be a fight spell. And then Visionary can help us ramp, and in the late game can be channeled to get back a bunch of stuff from our graveyard. So we're playing this over a ton of other card draw effects, as this can also function as early ramp, so it's a bit more flexible. And then at 3 mana, besides Stomper, I'm also trying out two copies of Cosima, which can potentially provide a lot of card advantage if we can send it on a voyage early on, and then later get it back, enters with a bunch of plus 1 counters, but in a pinch we can also play it as a 2-4 blocker, so it's still not bad against aggro. And then at 4 mana, we've got the full set of Cultivator, which can set up some very nice plays of maybe getting an island, and then keeping up Fading Hope, so we have a blocker and some interaction available. Chariot is also great, helping us stabilize by making a few cat tokens, and then Chariot can maybe even copy some of their Tree Folk tokens from Renan 7, so the play of an early Chariot followed by Renan 7 remains one of the best sequences in Standard, as long as the opponent doesn't have like a Brutal Cathar to exile or Tree Folk tokens in the process. And then we're playing only one copy of Memory Deluge, again since we don't want to play too many cards that don't affect the board, especially with Stomper not being able to block right away, so we want to limit the amount of cards that don't have an impact, but Deluge can be a very nice source of card advantage in the more grindy matchups, as we can also flash it back and maybe mill it with either Visionary or Ren's plus ability, so we still get some value out of the graveyard. And then we also have two copies of Tovalar's Huntmaster as a 6-drop that can also stabilize us nicely by making a pair of wolf tokens, can switch to knight and also maybe use it as removal and keep making more and more wolf tokens. And uh, yeah, that's mainly our deck. We've got some creature lands in the mana base with Lair and Hall, which are both quite nice in a ramp deck, as we can easily generate a lot of mana so we can activate them, and then need a lot of basics to search up with our Stomper and our Cultivator, so four islands, eight forests, We've got the two channel lands as well, and then some additional mana fixing with Pathway and Cascade. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Turn one dry it, turn two sack it. And plenty of cheap interaction, including denial, which is not bad with a stomper if we need to fight. And yeah, turn to aspirants. Looks like another Boros aggro deck. So for now we'll pass with a plan of jumping and sacking. Kumano. And an adversary. So we'll jump the three powered creature. Take two down to 17, and see so yeah, how next turn we can play Stomper and keep a Fading Hope if we'd like. Or now play Cultivator, even better. And I'll have to grab an island if we want to, Fading Hope. Seems okay, even though it might lead to some slightly awkward sequencing next turn.
Hope for a brutal Cathar so we can bounce it after they attack. Never mind, Ignition. Happy to bounce as well. And the Renan 7 looks good. Make a 5 5. Now they could have a Brutal Cathar to get rid of my token. But then we still have a good block on Adversary at least. Maybe a Burn Spell to finish off Ren, that's fine, so no Brutal Cathar at least. Okay, so how about Stomper keep up Denial as opposed to playing Dryad? Although if we play Dryad... I guess either way we can play Titan next turn. And Stomper now can also attack and block. Might be time to send our Tree Folk in the red zone. Sure. Opponent already chomping. And then Denial can also fight a Brutal Cathar before it exiles our Tree Folk so we can keep it around. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, nice early start with Cultivator, Fading Hope, and then opponent a bit stuck on mana as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand is promising. Turn 1 Dryad sets up an early Cultivator. Although we have to make a choice with his Drury Disruption. Still want to play Dryad turn 1, so we'll need to find another blue source if we want to curve into Cultivator. Opponents with a turn 1 planes for us to draw. Alright, so I'm gonna go with highest upside play of Sacking Dryad. Even though a tap to Disruption would give access to Fading Hope in case we're up against Aggro. Alright, there we go, perfect. Play Cultivator. And then next turn, run at 7. So, presumably blue-white control here. Which means Fading Hope is most likely bouncing our own creature to save it from removal. Virtuoso, never mind. So it's the creature plus pump spell deck. Don't really want a Fading Hope Virtuoso right now. I think uh, we'll go for Ren, make a Tree Folk, and then hang on to Cultivator on defense in case of a Bounce Spell bouncing our Tree Folk so we can uh, maybe better protect our Planeswalker. And then we want them to commit a bunch of resources pumping Virtuoso, and then hopefully bounce it before they can keep a protection, or maybe counter the protection spell. They kept up white man instead of blue, so they might have the uh, shield counter instance, as opposed to one of the blue protection spells. Homestead Courage resolves. Discarding the lifelink aura as well. So hopefully we can tap them out. Security bypass. Okay, can let them connive. And then for single white, I don't think there's anything that messes with our fading hope. So before they get a chance to attack, we'll bounce it. So they don't get to connive off Bypass. Light away to return their enchantments. Well, I was not playing around that. I guess we could have uh, bounced before the Bypass got enchanted. But that's okay. 
and then bottom lanes. Another cultivator's nice. So maybe should have plussed before playing land in case we find another creature land, but we did not. And then we want to hang on to our Jory Disruption. So not going to attack with a 1-1 one -one lair. I guess would be a 2-2 two -two lair. Starts adding up. Now let's just uh, keep up all our mana. And then next turn activate lair might be lethal. Virtuoso resolves. And Homestead Courage is fine. They might have their own bounce spell for the Tree Folk to stay alive. So if that's the case, we want to hang on to Disruption even when animating our lair. But our opponent packs it in, too far behind and maybe no interaction available. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, our hand's quite promising. Although, do need an untapped land if we want to sack Dried on two. Otherwise, we can uh, wait an extra turn. Would have been nice to get a turn three chariot down, but uh, this will have to do. And then I don't think we're in the market for disruption. Put on blue red. Hit for two, and then add another dry to the board, sack one of them, next turn chariot. And eventually we'll get to Huntmaster. I imagine they'll have some interaction here for chariots. So we could take a different approach. Start by attacking. We are applying a little bit of pressure here, so we could just keep up Disruption. Although maybe Disruption is like a, a play we want to make to counter Goldspan Dragon in one more turn. And then get Chariot countered. Or we can ramp with Dryads to get closer to Huntmaster. Yeah, opponents got their own Disruption. Yeah, we could also just play this and maybe play Huntmaster next turn. And then Fading Hope can temporarily deal with Goldspan. Opponent goes for Iteration. And the Disruption will be tapped. Okay, so the window's open for Huntmaster here. Resolves, and at 6 toughness it survives, burn down the house. All their opponent is playing white, so they could have some other sweepers in there. It's gonna be Hinata instead. Okay, that can be taken out in a variety of ways. But going for denial could be okay. Or we can just fading hope for 2 mana. Clear a path and then denial a potential sweeper. Might be safer. And points got to negate, and then now we'll fight. As opposed to bouncing, it seems better. A 4 mana denial as it targets two creatures, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's probably not gonna cut it without green mana. And a few too many expensive cards. This is better. Although, don't get to play turn 1 Dryad. So what to get rid of? Maybe it is Stomper actually, since we're missing double green and it's gonna be a while before we get there. And then I can just use a Dryad turn 3. And uh, be on our way, Cultivator into Ren. Going into Red White Aggro with Kumano. And another Dryad, so... Player tapped green source. Yep, 
And a Royal Eruption face, so we luckily dodged a 2-drop at least. Next turn we can sacrifice a Dryad and play another one, maybe Chum Block with it first. Aspirant for a counter. Take three. And a Fading Hope's nice too. Okay, so we have some options here. But most likely gonna chump and sack Dried. Brutal Cathar sort of forcing the issue here. I think I still wanna let that happen so I can soak up three damage. And then next turn Cultivator still keeps up Fading Hope to maybe bounce Brutal Cathar, we'll see. And then probably play a tap disruption. Since we're going to be tapping out for Venom 7 in the foreseeable future. So we've got more blue mana than we really need, but want to keep a fading hope here. Another brutal Cathar will let that resolve so we can maybe ambush an attack by bouncing the second Cathar. And doesn't matter since we're going to shuffle, but can get a forest. And then block other Cathar, I think. Otherwise, if it starts transforming back and forth, it can exile our tree folk tokens. But we are down to five. So I can play another Cultivator, although that doesn't leave mana for Ren. Can play Ren, although making a tree folk's bad in the face of a known brutal Cathar. So I could just plus. And then still chump with Dryads on etching, although then they can exile the Dryads before attacks. So maybe I'm better off just playing a Cultivator and having those blockers available. Right, there's a Cathar, so now Ren looks better. Goes for Cultivator, so we can chump with the Dryads. Soak up some damage. And hope they're out of Brutal Cathars. Could even play Ren and Seven twice. It's probably worth it. Make several tokens. And hope this can stabilize us. It's gonna be a Storm Chaser with haste. That's scary. Found a land. We do have a hall we can activate at least. So I don't think we're in a position to attack as much as I would like to. Or can we attack with one tree folk, put the opponent to nine to threaten lethal next turn, have three blockers back, but then any haste creature or burn spell pretty much kills us. But now it will transform to knights, which also affects the storm seeker, so that's pretty bad. But I don't think we have a choice, and then next turn we can make an extra tree folk. And maybe change our course of action. So if they can cast two spells, that's also pretty bad, because then this will transform back and exile a tree folk. So yeah, it's not looking good here. Adversary burns us to two, and that should be game as well for blockers to five attackers. All right, close one here.
needed our Titan of Industry to come down, blow up etching, gain some life back, perhaps. Ooh, opponent does not attack. Did they miss lethal? I guess we have one unknown in hand, so... Fair enough. Maybe they just have another burn spell in hand that they get to use anyway. Chariots? Okay, well, it doesn't help against the burn spell, but it produces a few blockers at least. Keep the unknown card in hand. Still have enough to animate Hall. But we're at the mercy of another burn spell. Cavalier, okay. Count from Cavalier. And an all out attack. Animate Hall. And then we want to probably keep the cat tokens. So let's see for that. Block here, here. Cats can trade. Well, that lines up nicely, so any objections? No, this looks pretty good to me. This is a slow roll burn spell to kill us anyway. Royal eruption to the face. Alright, well, <laughs> they got us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Early Dryad, set up turn 3 Cultivator, maybe even an early Huntmaster if we're lucky. Put on blue-green. Could it also be a ramp deck? Never mind, mill. Okay, well, uh... Let's get uh, the party started here and try and get a Huntmaster in play as soon as possible. A lot of basic lands, so this might be the fetch land version playing uh, the Splendid Reclamation to get a bunch of fetch lands back, but they haven't played any fetch lands so far, so I'm not sure what's up with that. At least we have some expensive cards in case of a hideous laughter. For now, just Cultivator. Could get an extra blue source or could get a forest to play Dryads. As we see a thirst for discovery from our opponents. So, next turn, what does our turn look like? Ideally, play Huntmaster. If not, Cultivator, keep up Disruption. So forest should be fine. And to add a 1-1 to the board. And yeah, there's their fetch land, so they found them after all. But at least no early rune cramp, which would have been quite problematic. So we can attack. And then, yeah, cultivator, keep up disruption is the plan. And we'll pass. Five mana. Is it time for hideous laughter? Yeah. Iteration with laughter times two. Oh, well, can counter one of them. Still 28 cards remaining. And Huntmaster, probably our best bet in closing out this game. Bonus at 9. And let's see if they can combo kill us. Thirst. Probably not good enough. And we can even kill them through removal on Huntmaster if they can bounce it. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and our hand's got potential. Dryad sets up turn 3 Chariot maybe.
opponent red blank. Okay. And then we can even crew chariot with our stomper. So off to an ideal start. Can even keep up disruption next turn as well. It's gonna be a voltage surge taking out a cat token. Hopefully we get to keep our second token alive to copy it with chariot. Fable, okay. So I think we stick to the plan. Stomper crew chariot attack. And keep up disruption. And get an extra island. Could keep the cat token back, so we have two blockers for the shaman, but I think we want to be on the beat town plan. If they don't play into disruption, what's our plan for next turn? Could animate the lair, or we can get our visionary down, but yeah, opponent already packs it in. Playing some sort of four-color deck here, maybe reanimator, who knows. But uh, yeah, didn't even have to show them disruption. Maybe they just flooded out after drawing two with uh, Fable. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems acceptable. Double Fading Hope as early interaction, and then we can send Cosima on a voyage. A couple creature lands will come in handy as well. Opponent also maybe a ramp deck with a visionary. Yeah, seems worth bouncing. Opponent might have their own Fading Hope. Dryads. Might be a better play than Cosima, honestly, for opponent has a Fading Hope. Cosima's not going to accomplish much. And Dryad can maybe get us closer to Ren and Seven. Although then again, Ren making a token, getting it bounced by Fading Hope is also not the best. So there's a few things to consider, but I'll go for Dryad. Can also decide not to minus Ren right away, instead just plus. Celestis, that resolves. And Visionary. Can eventually blow up Celestis with our Titan. Could double spell Cosima plus Visionary. Kind of just liking Ren and then plus to find more lands. Found them. Ren also good combo with our visionary filling the graveyard. And our opponent just passing. So let's see here. I can play Stomper and Cosima. And then next turn Titan. Question is whether we want to make a token with Ren or not. Might be okay. They bounce the token end of turn. And then they're not bouncing Cosima or Stomper. Now for opponent ramps with Visionary and has the 7 mana Giant to bounce her board, that would be annoying, but Fading Hope is good to see. And Visionary activates. You can see a couple more cards here, so opponent is also playing Denial and a Quandrix Command. So Cosima can go on a voyage. Ren's gonna keep plussing. And can start applying a bit of pressure with our Stomper.
Uh -huh, War Chief with haste. Can double block. And then they can decide which creature to take out. That's fine by me. Takes out Kusima. Huntmaster is not bad either. But for now, I'm kind of liking plus. Did not find any lands this time. It's too bad. Still have Visionary to get a bunch of stuff back later. Although, so does our opponents. Play Titan. Blowing up their artifacts. And then make a Rhino seems fine. And we can Fading Hope their Rhino. Disruption doesn't seem great. Hit for four. Disruption could actually be okay for opponents tapping out for seven mana cards, but they get the first chance to play one now. And if it's Coma, it's also uncounterable, so... It's gonna be a field trip to maybe get Mascot Exhibition. Gets teachings instead, although we can empty our hand pretty quickly, and yeah, opponent already conceding. Yeah, they did seem pretty far behind on board. We were ahead with a Planeswalker and a few creatures, had a mana advantage, so it's understandable. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Bit of early interaction, and then Stomper can help us ramp into a Renan 7, which is also quite synergistic with Chariot. All their opponent off to a nice start with turn to Aspirant. Prime target for Fading Hope. And then we want to make sure to bounce it before it gets a chance to put another counter somewhere. They've got the Cavalier as well, so yeah, the perfect start. Still bouncing Aspirant here. And then probably need an extra land. So we might end up playing Visionary and keeping up Fading Hope once again. And then curving Chariot into Ren and Seven, hopefully. Stomper not helping us block is a bit of an issue here. Uh, Royal Eruption to take that out, that's fine. So now we can bounce Cavalier and only take two. And then we'll keep land on top, so Chariot into Renan 7 could still work. So we're at 11. Next turn they can replay Cavalier with a plus one counter on it. Although, really just want to keep the Chariot alive, so we can copy our Tree Folk next turn. It's gonna be Aspirant instead, so slightly different approach. So, they might have a play with fire, and they want us to double block so they can kill a cat and essentially kill both. Or we can take three down to eight. They will still have to play with fire to finish off Ren and Seven, but not before we make a few tree folk. And they could also, I guess, block the chariot with aspirants and then finish it off with play with fire if we don't double block here. So, I I think I'm probably still better off going for it. And then keep the chariot to go with our tree folk. Now we'll only have one of them on defense. But hopefully we can keep this going. And Stomper can also help us crew next turn. And hopefully they send a few resources at Ren. Instead of going face. At least they didn't have a Brutal Cathar, which would have been pretty effective too here. Probably fine to block, and then... 
What happens? Our opponent has another burn spell to finish off our tree folk. Take three down to eight. Next turn, Stomper Cruise Chariot makes another tree folk. Still have a Planeswalker. That seems good enough. It's gonna be a Kami's Flare, so we take two more. Alright. At least it doesn't redirect to our Planeswalker. And then can start by plussing here. Play Stomper. I guess there was an argument for maybe putting lands in play, but we're still gonna get up to seven here. So Stomper can also block, but probably better reserved to crew here. And then does a tree folk attack or do we hang back? Probably hang back. Deal four, opponent is at 12, make another tree folk, and then next turn we can maybe start forcing them to chump. And especially if they have a brutal Cathar and we only leave one tree folk back, that could be bad. Eh, just a cavalier for now. Alright, so we get to untap, and we could use the zero ability on Ren if we'd like, just to put some extra lands in play. Don't hate that. We'll grow the tree folk, or we can make another one to crew the chariot. So, one tree folk plus Stomper's lethal. You can also use Hall of the Storm Giants, so have quite a few options. I guess make another tree folk might still be better here. Since pumping these by two doesn't make a huge difference. So we'll crew. Question is if we also attack with Hall. I can still leave Dryad back to Chum Block, so that seems okay. Just send everyone. And copy the tap tree folk. Although for single rent there's nothing our opponent can do, and they scoop it up. Alright, so yeah, Fading Hope, very important to keep us alive in the early turns, and then Chariots into Ren got the job done. Alright, so we got to see our blue-green ramp deck in action, and right now in standard, with red-white being so popular, it means you need to adjust your ramp decks to have a lower curve and a lot of cheap interaction, so a full set of Fading Hope seems necessary, and then having some of your top-end creatures be good at stabilizing when behind, cards like Huntmaster and Titan of Industry are quite important, so I think this is a pretty good approach for a ramp deck, but as always you need to pick your spots in the meta and make sure that you're adjusting your deck accordingly, so that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.